and I am going to share my screen. So it's Jeff, Jeff? No. Is it what? That's what I'm seeing on, on the picture now, Jeff, Jeff. No, what picture are you talking about? Your picture no, on the screen. Something just flashed on the screen, and I, I saw Jeff, Jeff. So it's just Jeff. No, it's no. That's what I told you. It's Jeff underscore Kalvaruski at okay. earthquake.net. That's, that's what it. I have. Okay, and that should work. Now, why is this thing to me? Zoom, Zoom has got us got some problems and uh, yes, it does. <laughs> um, I, I'm running into all of them. Uh, come on, where are we? <sighs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey. Just let me let me figure this hassle out with uh, with Zoom. Just one second. What happened? Oh, I see your recording. Mm -hmm. there we go. One screen. Now, this is really strange. It's just, ah, oh, there we go. Now, uh, do you see that? Does everybody see uh, um, the introduction to Windows 10? Yes, yes. yes. You can see it, okay, because it's giving me a message that says it's poor screening for some reason, but it hasn't. Uh, let me just change one. Just tell me if it ch the slide changes. Do you see the new slide? No. No. Huh. Hang on. It's. I, I think they 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 really got some problems with this this uh, screen sharing thing. Come on. Okay. So. Uh, How about that? How about that? No, it's still on the same. It's still the same slide. Hmm. Okay, let me stop sharing and start again. Share screen. Okay, do you see that? There you go. There okay. you go. There we go. All right. Uh, we got to keep finding ways around it. So now did it, did, it, did it change? Do you see the first screen now? Introduction yeah. to Windows yeah. 10? Good. Okay. So we beat it. So we'll give it a couple minutes. Uh, wait okay. for, people, for, late, for the late people to get in. All right. Uh, hey, Jeff. Yes, Morning. It's Sharita. I just Hi. wanted to say something. Not sure if you saw Sabrina's email in regards to um, the participants taking a survey. Um, for the class, so all they have to do is send their name and phone number to her email address, and I'm gonna put it in the chat box. Okay, cool. So everybody, right, guys. to get the chat box, just put your cursor at the bottom of your screen, and a you know, little little line will pop up, and one of the options there you will see is chat. And if you just press on that button, a little window opens on the side, and the chat is just that you can send messages either yes. to everybody or to individual people if you see one of your friends you can actually send them a chat that says you know hi and they alone will see a little message so sharita is saying uh, she'll send out a chat to everybody that will that will have details about uh, what she just said of getting the, yes. uh, the survey sure it's just Great. a survey of jeff class guys we just um this is something new we're implementing just to um see how you guys are um liking the class even though we've gotten positive feedback of course already we just need it in actual survey form so yeah. if you can send your email and phone number to the email address i'm going to drop in the drop box we'll greatly appreciate it Thank Excellent. you. And anybody who gives me a five out of five gets uh, 50 bucks. 
<laughs> hey, I'm a politician. What can you say? <laughs> and I'm just admitting people who are in the waiting room. Uh, here we go. And we're ready to start, I think. Okay, so let's get going. <laughs> All right, so this is the introduction to Windows 10. We had our first session last week. Uh, I'm going to um, uh, you know, summarize what we did, go over what we did, and then move on. So here's all the stuff about me. And there, at, for everybody, at the bottom is my address. If, just check that that's the one you use. Jeff underscore Kalwariski at earthling.net. Unfortunately, you have to spell it exactly right. There's no apostrophes in it. There's no... Uh, the only thing is that this is an underscore here and not a not a dash. I don't know why that I got that years and years ago. Um, you, if you send it an email to that address, or you can also send it if any if, if for any reason this doesn't work from your computer, I also have an email address which is Jeff dot period Calvariski at gmail dot com. So either of those will reach me, um, and so you could try both of them. But like I said, anybody who sent me a message this past week and didn't get the material just give it one hour after the end of the session today and if you don't have it that means i didn't get it and then send me another one either to this address or to jeff dot exactly the same except the dot at gmail.com okay and i will be sure to send it to you i sent it out to about half a dozen people already last week that actually did reach me so i'm not sure you know why yours didn't um, there's probably a reason for it, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's get started. What is Windows 10? <clears throat> and again, running through it very quickly, because we did it last week. If there are any questions from last week, feel free to ask them, now's the time. So Windows 10 is an operating system, which is, a, is a, also known as an OS, or the operating system. It's a very old term. It actually dates back to IBM in the 1960s when the first mainframe computers came out in the 1960s. IBM had this, main, this program that ran the computer and they called it the operating system. And that term for some strange reason has survived uh, <clears throat> you know, 60 years into, into the 21st century and we still call it an operating system. So it's a piece of software which is on your computer and it's provided it's provided these days, so to speak, free uh, from the manufacturer and it's on your computer. And what it does is it actually runs the computer. So without an operating system, your computer is just, you know, big, big paperweights, and, you know, heavy, heavy paperweight, doesn't do anything. It's like a motor car without an engine, right? The, uh, the, the operating system is the engine. It's exactly the same as the engine in your car. And the good news is just like the engine in your car, you don't really care very much about it. As, except for one thing, when it doesn't work, right? When something goes wrong. But other than that, uh, Windows 10 sits in the background and does a lot of very complicated things to make sure your computer runs the way you want. It controls all the files. It, it allows you to talk to different programs and so on. And Windows 10 is the latest version. Uh, Microsoft doesn't really know how to count because the first real version of Windows was Windows 3.1. And then it went... After 3.1 came 4, and then uh, it went to 7, I think. There was never a 5 and a 6. And then Windows 8, and then there was Windows ME, the Millennial Edition, in the year 2000. And then uh, <clears throat> after Windows 8, they jumped to Windows 10. So they don't count very well. But Windows 10 is the latest version. The Windows, the first version, really wasn't Windows 1. It was actually Windows 3.1 that came out in 1985. And you had to pay for it in those days. Now it's pretty much built into the computers. You don't have to install it in the good old days. It was a huge job to install the operating system. You've got your brand new computer and it could take you half a day to get it, get the operating system installed. And if anything went wrong in the middle, well, you know, often you had a, you were hosed and you had to start all over again. Now it comes built in and everything's great. Um, it works for you. It does what it should. Mostly you don't care about it. In fact, it works so well that it sits in the background and you almost never have to know anything about it. But if you understand Windows 10, you can get a lot more out of your computer, right? So let's look at it. What does it do? It provides the standard operating environment, hence the name operating system. 
And what is a standard operating environment? It means that all apps, all programs, the current ones and future ones in, in the years to come, work in the same way. When, when, window, you know, when, when the PCs first came out and on the mainframe days before that, every program worked differently, which was great for guys like me because it was so complicated that you needed geeks like me to explain to you how to make things work because everyone was different. Imagine you know, that you know, Ford's to drive a Ford was completely different to driving a Chevy and completely different to driving a BMW. And every time you got a new car of a different kind, you had to learn how to drive all over again. They all had the gears in the different places and uh, the, the buttons did different things and, and so on and so forth. Well, that's how it was in the early days, believe it or not. <clears throat> what Windows has done is brought it all together. So all apps look and look and feel, as we say, the same. They have the same look and all the apps you have, if you look at it, you'll see have very similar kind of look uh, of, of how they operate and all the buttons do more or less the same thing. So once you know how to use Microsoft Word, you pretty much know mostly how to use Microsoft Excel, for example. And so the operating system ensures that even future apps won't go off into the wild blue yonder and, and require you to, you know, have to go into a, to a store or, or call somebody like me to say, you know, how does this thing work? I can't even get it started. When you, when you load up a new application, a new program, it's going to work in roughly the same way. So Windows does a lot of other things too. It handles your power on and power off. Uh, what to do, you know, what should it do when you close the laptop? So again, in the early days, you know, you, you had to figure out power on and power off yourself. And, you know, sometimes you could, if you weren't careful, you could lose everything you had done that day, right? If you hadn't backed it up or saved the information. Now Windows 10 handles that. And if you leave apps open and you haven't, you know, let's say you're working on a document and you forgot to save it, Windows 10 will make sure it'll either remind you to save it, in which case you can save it before it shuts down, or it will remember where you were and when you bring it up again, it'll be exactly back where you were and you can carry on doing what you, what you wanted or what you were doing. Uh, it handles file handling and storage. So all the files, the, every file that you have on your computer and you can have thousands and thousands. In fact, Windows itself has thousands of files. It handles that perfectly. It's like your librarian. So imagine you have this huge library with hundreds and hundreds or thousands of books in and Windows is a librarian. So you say, I want this file or this, this letter that I was working on, this document, Windows finds it instantly. Uh, and how it does it is completely irrelevant to us. As long as Windows works, it will find that file. Um, it handles the storage of where the files go and all that kind of stuff, all taken care for you. Internet connectivity and security. So connecting to the internet used to be a complicated exercise. Now there's nothing to it. You kind of Press a button, tell it the name of your, of your network that you've got, your AT&T network or your Verizon or whatever, whoever you get your internet connectivity from, and it connects to it, provided you have the password and you're done. It also handles a lot of security. So <clears throat> there was a time when Windows was really not a very secure operating system. Microsoft did a terrible job, uh, especially with, back in the versions like Windows ME. They, they were just terrible. The security was horrible. And the bad guys figured it out very quickly of uh, you know how to break into your computer and so on. Thank goodness that you know they they saw the light a number of years ago, and when Windows 10 came out, it has all the security built in. So you don't need all kinds of extra programs anymore for antivirus and all that kind of stuff. So if you get ads, you know, that you need to install this program and it's only $29 or $39 or something, and it, you know, it, protects your computer, just throw it away because all of that is already built into, into Windows. It, they, <coughs> Windows provides you regular updates. So there was an update. In fact, there have been two updates in the last couple of days. And so you'll just get a message on your computer saying there's an update. Um, <clears throat> you don't have to install it right then. If you're busy doing something, you can carry on and tell it, hey, install the update later at either at noon today when I go for lunch or at nine o'clock tonight when I'm finished working or whatever you want, you can delay the update. But uh, I always say, when there's an update to Windows from Microsoft, always install it because the updates, uh, they often add new features, they enhance the product, they give you new things, and very often they fix security errors. So 
the good guys in universities and so where in places like you look back on are looking for problems all the time and it's better that they find it than before the bad guys find it and as soon as they find a problem they report it to microsoft microsoft makes what is called a fix a correction uh, to, to prevent that from happening or to prevent you from getting scammed by the bad guys and um, <clears throat> Once you install it, you know, that problem has gone away. So it does all of those things and much, much, much more. Okay, so last time, uh, can you guys, everybody just make sure that you're, uh, that you're muted. I'm getting some background noise. Uh, okay, I just muted. Right, okay, thanks very much. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I'll go through this very quickly again. You know, something as simple as the keyboard is not as simple as what you might think. Now, your keyboard mostly will look the same as this, but, uh, you know, laptop keyboards and, and certain desktops are slightly different. But by and large, it's, <clears throat> it's essentially the same as this. Um, the keys will all be marked in exactly the same way. Uh, we know we've got the, the letter keys in the middle, Q, W, U, R, T, etc. And that's... <clears throat> this is why this is called, this keyboard, this particular layout of the keyboard is called QWERTY, the QWERTY keyboard. Why is it called QWERTY? Well, if you look at the top row here, yeah, you'll see Q-W-E-R-T-Y, QWERTY, and it comes from that. So when people talk about the QWERTY keyboard, it's this particular layout. And the reason I mention that is because there are other layouts. In fact, there's, there's one called the Dvorak keyboard, which is much more logical than this. And uh, as I explained last week, the reason we have this very strange layout of letters, I mean, it's just not consistent at all, um, uh, is, comes from the old days with a typewriter, when you used to have keys that when you hit, when you pressed an A, a key flicked up and hits it with an A on it and <clears throat> typed an A on the, uh, on the paper. But those, if you type too fast, those keys would jam each other and they would get jammed up, right? And so they produced this weird layout actually to slow typists down, right? Uh, that was the days before any of us typed it, only, ex, only, only specialist types. They were, you know, remember the days of the typists. People, usually women, who were more, their, their fingers were better and the, more easily able to, to, to do it fast than men with big fat fingers. So women were, typically were, were typists and they were very fast at it but they came up with this keyboard to make sure to slow them down and believe it or not, we're stuck with the same keyboard, right? Um, <clears throat> another example of that is that uh, we're still stuck today with a particular, the, the, the width of, of, of the rails of our trains. Uh, I won't bore you with the whole story, but it really comes from Roman times. That was the width uh, of the wheels on an ox wagon in Roman time. So 2000 years later, after Roman times, we still have, that exact width on our train. So some things survive and never go away. And I explained to you why we call it uppercase and lowercase, which is again, a leftover from the 15th century when we first had the printing press and they kept the, let, the, 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 the capital letters in one box and the, up here and the small letters in another box down here. And that was the uppercase and this was the lowercase. So today we talk about uppercase letters meaning capitals and lowercase letters meaning uh, uh, not capitals, the ordinary letters of the alphabet. <clears throat> so we know how that works. We know that to get a capital, we press the, the shift key and there are two shift keys, one on each side. And that allows you to use the left shift key if you're typing a letter with your right hand, like a P, or press the right shift key and type a capital letter like an A with your left hand. <clears throat> but either, either, either shift key on both sides on, of the keyboard, <clears throat> excuse me, has exactly the same effect. Okay, uh, I spoke about the tab key, which isn't really needed much anymore, but the tab key also left over from the days of the typewriter, it would allow you to tab in. So you would tab to, you could jump to the first tab stop, to the second tab. So you could set tab stops, typists typically had them like every 10 characters or something. And so instead of typing a whole lot of spaces to get to the middle, you could just hit the tab key. We don't really need that anymore because the computer centers are, 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 are typing automatically and so on. Okay. The, ones that I, the one that I really wanted to show you, well, sorry, before, let me just mention, if somebody asked me last time, <clears throat> these F keys at the top, function keys, so they are actual keys like this on this keyboard, or on your laptop, you'll see they, they, they have in sort of small print and they usually have some pictures next to them, they have a little picture, but you on your, on your 
even on your laptop, you'll see in smaller print, F1, F2, F3, and that's the function key, function one, function two, function three. So in the days before Windows, it was very difficult to tell something like Microsoft Word what you wanted to do. And so they use these function keys, you know, function three might be bold and function four might be underline or whatever, right? And it was really a pain in the neck to remember that stuff. Pretty much that's gone. And you essentially, <clears throat> the function keys are now irrelevant. I don't know why they're even still on the keyboard. There's only one function key that I use, and that was what I was playing with earlier on, is F4. And function key F4 allows you to decide what screens you're using. You can have more, I have more than one screen. So I have another screen on my right, and I have a main screen on my laptop, or your, sec your other screen could be a projector. You, know, you could be projecting this up on a wall or on a screen if you're giving a lecture. Other than that, the function keys don't mean anything. <clears throat> uh, the escape key up here is a useful key. Um, and again, it's a leftover from the old days, but right now and under Windows, it often allows you to escape from what you were doing. So if you started something and you, you, you're kind of stuck, very often pressing the escape key will get you out. It doesn't do any damage. It doesn't always work. It depends on where you are and so on. But very often the escape key is a good way too escape if you kind of stuck and you're not sure what you're doing anymore. Okay, so let's talk about, the, uh, there are also some, some specialized keys. There's the backspace key, which I think everybody knows. So wherever you are on the, on the cursor, if I'm over here looking at the heading line, I'm right after the D, between the D and the colon at the top, if you can see my, my arrow. If I, if I was sitting there, if the cursor was there and I pressed the backspace, it would delete the D right and if i was here at the t and i press the backspace it will delete the t so going backwards right um <clears throat> the equivalent of that is over here called the delete key right i don't know why we have two different keys it would have made sense to have just one and then use a shift or something but the delete key works the other way so if i'm now sitting here between the d and the colon the delete key will delete to the right it will delete the colon key the colon that character there. If I was sitting here between the Y and the B of keyboard and I hit backspace, it would delete the Y. And if I hit delete, it would delete the B, right? So a little confusing there, but once you know how to use it, it's, it, it's pretty common and pretty simple. Okay, <clears throat> down at the bottom here are two alt keys. Next to the space bar on the left is an alt and an alt. Those keys are the alt stood for alternate. It was some alternate function in the old days, but the key has remained. It's almost never used, and I'm not even going to mention it. So the only two that I really want to tell you about are the control key, this one here. It's marked CTRL. So you'll see it on your laptop or on your, on your keyboard like this. So this is a secondary keyboard that I have connected to my laptop, but I also, also have the laptop keyboard. <clears throat> and the control key... Uh, allows us to do certain special functions. What control meant in the old days, I don't know. I don't know what you were controlling, but it's still left behind. So we'll talk about that in a second. There's some very useful features of that. And then this one that's got this like little flag on it, which you will see is really the same as the, uh, at the back here, um, uh, uh, on, my, on my screen, you'll see the four little colored squares. That's, that's the insignia of Microsoft Windows. That's, that's the insignia for Windows. Four little squares that look like kind of a flag. Uh, they may be purely a rec rectangular or they may be sort of curved like this, but you have four little squares. Uh, and that's called the Windows key. And that's specific to Windows. That's a key that only came out a few years ago. So if you have a computer that's more than five or six years old, it won't have that key on at all. Okay, getting back to control then. So moving forward rapidly, I'm going to slip, skip all, over all of this and go straight to, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot about this. On some keyboards, not all, you have a separate numeric pad on the right. Uh, and that's useful if you're doing a lot of number stuff, like doing your taxes or something that's got a lot of numbers in. Of course, we have the numbers across the top. So you can also use the numbers above the letters. But here it puts the numbers all next to each other. So it's very easy for somebody you know, who's just typing in lots of numbers like a, a CPA or, or somebody doing invoicing or whatever, or adding up a column of figures, you're doing your budget and you want to add up your column of figures, then the numeric pad is easier. But not all keyboards have the numeric pad and obviously it's an optional extra, you don't really need it. So what I want to talk about was the control key 
and the CTRL, the control key in the bottom left hand corner, and there's also one on the right. So there's one, uh, three keys to the left of the space bar, and there's one, four keys to the right of the space bar as well, left and right. They do exactly the same thing. So you can press either control key and they do the, exactly the same thing. <clears throat> and the beauty of the control key is something that, again, a lot of people don't know, is that it allows you to access a very useful feature in Windows called the clipboard. And the clipboard, uh, which is <clears throat> something like this, you'll, you'll, you'll see this little icon in the top right hand corner, that's their, their, their icon for, for the clipboard, looks like an old clipboard. You remember, you know, your sports coaches use them. You've got a, a clip at the top, you know, that holds the paper down. Here's the paper where the smiley face is, and you use the clipboard, you write notes, you. When you're finished with the notes, you tear that out and throw it away and go to the next page. So a clipboard really is for short-term or non-permanent storage. And you think, why would we need that? We, we've got files. We can store information in files. But the clipboard allows us to do uh, one very useful thing, is that if you have information in one program, let us say your, uh, your, you, uh, your email, you have an email and it has some, some information in it, that you would like to perhaps text to somebody else. So you can also text from your computer, right? Or put it into a different email in a different program. Maybe you got it in a Gmail, <clears throat> but you wanna send it out with Microsoft Outlook, which is a different kind of email program. <clears throat> or you wanna take, you got something in, a, in, in, in an email, and you now think, gee, that's interesting. Somebody sends you an interesting thought and you wanted to put that into a Word document that you were typing, then the clipboard allows you to do that. So it's a kind of a storage that sits, imagine it sitting above your computer. It's, it's independent of all the programs that are running. And you can, from program one, you can put information into the clipboard, and then you can go to a totally different program, program two, and um, the information will still be in the clipboard, and you can bring it back from the clipboard. And they call that copy, copy it to the clipboard, and paste, right? So copy is kind of like making a Xerox copy of something. And paste is imagine that you, you know, you'd cut out an article from the newspaper, snip, 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 and you could put it on another piece of paper with some, some, you know, sticky tape or some glue and paste it in. So you've now got it into another document. Uh, will everybody please um, uh, mute their mute mute? I'm hearing background noise. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> so. All we have to do when we, if I wanted to copy this first bullet point here that says Windows 10, blah, 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 ending up at the word pictures in parentheses, if I wanted to copy that to the clipboard, because I now wanted to put it into a Word document or into an email, all I've got to do is highlight these, this, this particular piece of information, highlight it so that Windows knows what I'm talking about. And I'm going to tell you in a moment how you highlight. So let's just assume you know how to do it for that. For the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the next few seconds, then all I have to do is highlight this. So Windows knows I want this bullet and not the second bullet or the third bullet or whatever, right? And then all I have to do is press Control, the Control key, I'll put it in square brackets to show it. We're not typing the letter CTRL, we're just pressing the one key called Control CTRL. So you hold down the Control key with your, with your left hand and with your right hand, press the C. So hold down the control key with your left hand and press the C. Or of course, if you if you're dexterous, you can press the C with your little finger, uh, control with your little finger, and press the C with your your thumb or your first finger. But it's easier to do it with two hands, right? And when you press Control and C together, then whatever is highlighted, Windows says, "Aha!" and it puts it up in the clipboard, right? Imagine that like you made a little Xerox copy and you you put it in your clipboard. Imagine you're carrying a clipboard like this. <clears throat> now you can go somewhere else, you can jump to another program. And again, in due course, I'm going to show you how to jump between programs. Uh, you can have as many programs as you like running at the same time in Windows, and you can just hop between them, right? Just like having different documents on your desk. You can, you can work from document one, and then you can go to document two, and then you can go to document three, and then you can go back to document one. We can do that with Windows. We can have as many applications as many programs running as we like so i can jump from this program which is um uh, powerpoint windows powerpoint that's how i created this document in good old powerpoint and i can go to 
I can go to Word and type and then paste it into a Word document, or I can go to a text and type it into the text box, copy it into the text box and then send you a text. And the way we then do that, <clears throat> the paste is not control P as you would imagine, but it's control V, right? Uh, strange why they did that, but at least the C and the V are next to each other. So that's easy to remember. So C, control and C copies it out, control and V brings it back, right? And, you know, I'm gonna leave you to try that out yourself, um, but it's a, a very useful feature. I, I probably use it, you know, every single day. Uh, I'm always copying stuff from one place to another because really that's what computer is about, is moving information around, right? So you can not only copy uh, text, you can also copy pictures. So let us say you go to Amazon <clears throat> and you see a really nice pair of shoes, right? They look great. And you want to send those shoes, you want to send it to your daughter or your son and say, hey, look at these cool shoes. Should I buy them? Or would you like a, you know, would you like a pair of these shoes for your birthday? You can actually just copy that picture, <clears throat> put it in a clipboard, go to an email or, or, or text, paste it back, and that picture will now, you can now send in an email to your, to whoever, to your, to the other person, or you can just press the, 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 the send button on the text and they'll get a text immediately. Right? But so it's a very, very useful thing, copy and paste. But there's also <clears throat> one more function that we can do with the, with the control in, in, this, in this instance. So let us, say, let us say I had this document here. Look at this page that we've got with all these four bullets on and then some sub bullets down here. Let us say I wanted to take this second line, the second bullet out, and I decided, no, I don't want it here and, you know, in the second position. I want it down at the bottom after this bullet here, or perhaps after the third bullet. I want to move this, this whole line somewhere else. Well, if I did it with a copy, I would copy it, and then I could put my, all I do is put my cursor over here, let's say, and press Control V, and it would reappear. But now I would have two versions of it. I would have one up top here and one down here. Now, if that's what I wanted to do, I wanted to have two copies, that's fine. But usually, let's say I said I wanted to move this down. I didn't want, I want to take it out of this position and put it into that position. Uh, now, then I'd have to go back to the first one and delete it, which I could do. All I've got to do is put my cursor at the beginning here and hold down the delete key. So if you hold down the delete key, it will delete repetitively. repetitively. You don't even have to go delete, 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 delete. Just hold the key down and it will delete. Or I could go to the end of the line and press the backspace key and it would go, it would delete the C, the O, the D, the E going backwards pretty fast. You just got to be careful you don't overrun and go on to the next line or the previous line. But, you know, Windows says, hey, that's too much work. So I have an option here that when I copy out to the clipboard, I can also delete it from where it originally was. So instead of control C, if I use control X, and again, the X is exactly next to the C. So the C is in the middle, the X is to the left, and the V is to the right. So it makes it kind of easy to remember those three. Control X copies to the clipboard, but it deletes it from the original location. So if I highlighted this line over here, the second bullet, and said control X, control X, this, the control key plus the letter X, it would put in the clipboard and delete this line. So now this line would disappear, the whole thing would move up, this would be the first bullet, that would be the second bullet, that would be the third bullet, and then let's say I either put it, want to put it here or down at the bottom, let's say I'm going to go right down to the bottom, I can put my cursor way down at the bottom, sorry, uh, down at the bottom, Again, press control V, the same as before, and it will bring it back. And so within a couple of seconds, I've been able to take this whole line or these two lines, it could be two lines, and copy them to somewhere else and remove them from the, the original place. So if you're typing a document and you've typed four paragraphs and you decide now, wait a minute, it'll read better if I take paragraph two and I put it after paragraph four, all you have to do is highlight paragraph two Control X, which puts it in the clipboard. Move your cursor to after what is now paragraph three, because paragraph two has disappeared. So now we've re, re, 
renumbered them, so to speak, one, two, three, put it after paragraph three, press control V, and it will suddenly reappear there and you'll have effectively moved it from one place to the other, right? <clears throat> so that's it's as simple as that. That's, that's really all I have to teach you about control using the control key. Control C, copy to the clipboard. Control V, paste, which brings it back. Or control X, which copies it to the keyboard, uh, to the clipboard and deletes it uh, from the old place and then paste as above. So the only thing I need to teach you then is, uh, I'm just gonna mention it right now, is how do we highlight? How do we tell Windows that this is the line, this line here, this third bullet to paste the text. That's the one I want. And perhaps I don't, want to, I don't even wanna copy the whole line. I could just wanna paste up to the comma, for example, or just one word, whatever you want. Right? So let's, let's do something crazy. I don't know why I'd wanna do it, but let's say I only wanted to copy from the word to until this comma to the clipboard. All I do is I put my cursor to the left of the T, oops, sorry, to the left of the T, hold down, hold down the shift key, the shift key, and drag it across to the, to the right. Just while I'm holding down the shift key with my left hand with this finger, hold down the shift key, with your mouse, just press the left mouse button, the one that we usually use, this one, the left mouse button, you can see it here, this one. Hold it down, press it down and hold it. And then just move to the right. Uh, yeah, move over to the right. In fact, uh, you, you can move it as far as you like. You can move it one word, two words, the whole line, whatever you want. And you will see that the text will change color. On some versions of Windows, it, it will turn blue. In some other versions of Windows, it sort of you get it gets a gray background. That means it's being highlighted. When you finished highlighting, you got as far as you like, either the end of this line or up to the comma. You just lift your finger, <clears throat> or from the from the uh, from the mouse, and now press Control C, and we'll copy all that text um, in, 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 into the clipboard. So it takes a little practice. You got to do it a couple times, um, but once you've done it, it's it's really easy. So the question is, how do I see the clipboard? Now, <clears throat> some of them, some, some of your computers, uh, if they're older versions of, of, of Windows that you have, more than about two years, two years old, um, you may not even have the, this, this clip. You, there is always a basic clipboard, <clears throat> excuse me, that can copy one item. So for many years, Windows allowed you to copy one item. A couple of years ago, they brought out this new version where you now can copy many, many items to the clipboard and you can, you can leave them there, right? So uh, things that you might want to use again, you can leave in the clipboard and then bring them back tomorrow or next week or whenever you like, okay? And so basically Windows, the new version maintains them in a list. The latest one is on top. This is the one I just copied. Imagine here's my clipboard. I'll tell you how to get to it in a moment. And this is, this is the first one, the one I just copied. This is the one I copied before that, or perhaps yesterday, and so on. And this can be one before that and before that, and there's no limits on how many items you can clip, right? <clears throat> so how do we get to see the clipboard? And the way we do that is we press the Windows key. So that's the one between the Control and the Alt in the bottom left-hand corner. The Windows key, or it's also on the right, uh, just on the right of the space bar, right next to the Alt key, the, the, the key with a the, with the flag on it, with the Windows flag on it, if you hold that down with your left hand and press the V with your right hand, V for victory, then the clipboard will pop up, right? And you will be able to see the clipboard and it can have as many items as you want. Here, I've only got two items and I, uh, the first item is just text and it says clipboard on Windows rocks, right? I just typed that text. And, and, and copied it up there, right? And it tells me when it was copied at 4.56 p.m. today, whatever today is. But here's the one before, which was also done at 4.56 p.m., so maybe half a minute before, but it could have been last week. This one you can see is some kind of a picture, and I just did that deliberately to show you this is pure text, and this could be that picture from Amazon or from a, a website, you're at cnn.com and you see something interesting, a photograph of 
you know, of somebody and you say, well, gee, I'd like to have that photograph. You can actually copy that photograph and put it into the, into the clipboard. And again, I'm going to show you later on how to do that. Uh, but it's really nothing more than what I've already showed you, which is highlighting. So you can highlight pictures as well as you can highlight text. And when you type control C, it copies them up to the clipboard. So now once the clipboard is open, it just pops up like this somewhere on your window, on, on, your, on your screen. And then when you press the escape key, it'll go away. It, it's, it's not that it's gone away, it hasn't disappeared, it's just not showing up. So when you need it, it pops up, and when you don't need it, it goes away, which is wonderful. So if I, if I have my cursor, let's say, uh, here between the words two and C, that's where my cursor is. Let's say that cursor is flashing there, you know, the little flashing line that you get. And I go to the clipboard and I just click on this one. I click on this entry in the clipboard, it will instantly copy it or paste it back to where my cursor is. So all you have to do, if I wanted it to be a new line, I would put my cursor at the end of this line and hit, hit return or enter, which would go to a new line, press that clipboard, but, uh, clipboard entry and it would appear over here on the left. Uh, obviously I'm not gonna do it now because I'm in the middle of this, uh, of this display and uh, of having a lot of trouble with Zoom of when you try and, you know, if you swap from one, one application to another, Zoom is still trying to figure out how to do that. And last week it caused us a lot of trouble, so I'm not going to do it. So again, I can, to, to, to copy this whole line here to the clipboard, put my cursor to the left, hold down the, 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 the left button, the left mouse button, drag it all the way across to wherever I want, stop wherever I want. I can stop in the middle of a word, I can stop between two words. I can stop at the comma. I can stop at the B of clipboard. I'm going to copy whatever I want. Usually it's a whole line or a whole paragraph, but it could be as much as you want. And I say control C, it'll put in the clipboard and instantly this would, if I now copy it again, this one would move down to here. The picture would move out of sight down to below where you couldn't see it. And whatever I copied here would appear up there. And now once there are items that you can see, you'll have a little scroll bar on the right. Uh, and and if, you, if you look here, you can see there's like a little gray bar. You see this gray bar? Now, one, the, the, the scroll bar now doesn't work because there's nothing to scroll down to. There's nothing below. I only have two in the clipboard. But if I had three or four or five or 10 or 20, there would be a little button that would appear on the scroll bar, a little gray button, a little, 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 little rectangle. And all I have to do is, Put my cursor on the rectangle. Again, hold down the key, the, the left key. Uh, and as long as my finger is on the left, on the left mouse, sorry, not left key, left mouse button, I can move up and down, up and down, and I can see the ones that are down below go back up to the top. So it's very simple. So remember that now. In general, in Windows, the left mouse button, this one here, right? So here's my mouse. This one over here, the left button, the one that's under your, that's under your forefinger, that's a very useful button. When you hold it down in Windows, that means to Windows, I want to grab something. I want you to, to grab something. So, for example, if I hold it down while highlighting text, it means I, wanna, I, want, I want you to see me grabbing this text. I want to take this text and, and copy it to the clipboard, for example. Right? If, you, if there's a scroll bar here and you want to grab that scroll bar button, so it's a little tiny button that appears here, a little, little gray box. If you point at it, hold down the left key, you can now move up and down and that um, uh, clipboard will move up and down. It'll show you what's down below or what's above, right? And there can be as many items in there uh, as you want. So the other question then people ask me, well, what do I need this clipboard for? Well, I've already told you some examples. It's very useful for copying from one application to another application, but it's also very useful for keeping stuff that you might want, quite often want to type in. So let us say you have your, your name and address, right? If you type a lot of letters and you want to put your name and address in, you can type it out every time. But if you're lazy like I am, Type your name out one time, put it in the copy to the clipboard, type your address, copy it to the clipboard, and now you can bring them back anytime you like without typing them just by getting it from the clipboard. Another useful thing to put on the clipboard 
of your own computer. I don't recommend doing this on a computer that might be shared with other people, but on your own computer, it's things like a credit card number. So if you go to Amazon and, or you want to shop online, you're walmart.com or amazon.com and you need to put in your credit card number, it's a good place to have the credit card number somewhere down on the clipboard. Only you would know it was there and it's on your own computer. Nobody else can see it. Nobody from the internet can get into your computer and see your clipboard. So as long as you have control of the, of, of, of the computer, it's your computer, you and your spouse, for example, um, that's perfectly good idea as well. And, and so um, I often keep you know, sensitive information like that in the clipboard because I know that nobody else can actually see it, right? Uh, you can keep passwords in there, things that you want to remember. Uh, you know, you want to you, you want to remember you know an account number, with a social your social security account number. You know, if it's not or some number that's not the social security number, but the account number with a bank or whatever. You can put that kind of stuff in the clipboard. And providing that this is your own computer, uh, that's a pretty safe way to do it, and it's an easy way to to keep stuff that you need regularly. Okay, I said to scroll the clips. We you know that's it. So you would see the scroll bar over on the right here, and we can have as many of these as we like. Um, how do we get rid of them? Well, you will see that in the, uh, uh, in, in the top right-hand corner uh, of each of these uh, entries in the clipboard, can you see the little X? I don't know why they had to do it like this. It would have been much easier just to hit the delete key uh, like we do everything else, but Microsoft in their wisdom decided that uh, the little X was the way to do it which is not great for you know, eyes like mine, but I know that the X is there. So if you just put your cursor on the X like I'm doing right now, and you left click, you hit the left button, left click button, uh, it will delete that entry and it's gone, right? You, 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 um, uh, you know, it's gone, it'll, it'll then, if, so if I deleted it on this one, then this picture would move up into the first position and the second position say would be blank if I only had these two, or the second position would now be filled with whatever was the third one before, they would move up, right? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so that's very useful. There's one more useful thing I wanna teach you about the, on the keyboard. Um, and again, it uses the control key. So Microsoft have made this control key very useful, but as I say, it's not written down in many places, and most people don't even know this exists, but it's very useful. If you type, Control, the control key, and the letter Z. So that's the letter just to the left of the X. So again, it's VX, VCXZ going to the right. Control Z is the most useful key. And that's what I call the oops key. If you've just done something and then you say, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I, you know, I deleted this whole, this whole paragraph here. I just deleted it. I meant to delete the second paragraph. Or I meant to copy this to the clipboard, but I accidentally typed control X instead of control C, which deleted it, right? Uh, you know, the, the, the classic oops, I, I deleted the, a whole paragraph in my Word document or a whole page. It's possible to delete a whole page. Oh my gosh, now I've got to type the whole page again. Well, the good news is no, you don't. You have the oops key. Um, please, please, please uh, mute your, 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 your uh, devices, everybody. I'm hearing background noise. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Uh, there's one more, as I say, one more version uh, of the control, control ser series, and that's control and Z. So control Z is the oops key. The, uh, they call it the undo. So whatever you just did, control Z will undo. It'll, revert, it'll take you back. It's kind of like, it would be very useful. If, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever done this, but when you're in your car and you're driving on the interstate, and you're looking for exit number 27 and then suddenly realize, oops, I just passed exit 27. And now I gotta go to 10 miles to exit 28 before I can come back. It would be really nice if you could stop your car, back it up on the interstate and get off at exit 27. Well, obviously we can't do that on the interstate or you know, uh, I, I missed the plane because I got there 10 minutes late. It would be nice to be able to go back in time and not go to have that extra cup of coffee, which made me late for the plane and I missed the plane, but go straight to the plane. But very nice to be able to undo things like that uh, or, you know, all the stupid things we do in life, uh, but you can do it on Windows. So whatever you have just done, Control Z will reverse. And if you type Control Z again, it will reverse the thing you did before and so on. So, uh, you know, 
if you've been working on a document and you've just you know, done some things now that you don't want to do anymore, either because you did them wrong, you made a mistake, or you've just changed your mind, you can control Z and control Z and control Z, and you can go backwards in time, undoing the previous thing, the previous one before that, the previous one before that, and so on. Very useful. I use it all the time because I'm a klutz, and I often you know, delete the wrong paragraph or do something silly. Uh, you can always undo it. So, for example, if I deleted this, uh, I meant to delete this picture, but I accidentally deleted this, this one, this first one here that says clipboard on Windows 10 rocks. I said, oh, my God, you idiot, you deleted the wrong one. Control Z will bring it back, right? And it, it will put me back where I was. So remember two very useful keys then, or four very useful keys. Control Z, X, C, and V. And you just have to remember them. Control C is obviously easy to remember for copy. Control uh, V is paste. It's not so easy to remember, but it's the one right next to the C. So first you'll do the C, then you'll do the V. X is to the other, to the left of the C. X says, do, do the same as C, but the X looks like a pair of scissors, right? It's the closest to, on a keyboard to a pair of scissors. So that really means you cut it out. It's like when you cut out an article from a newspaper, well, once you've cut it out, it's gone and then you can stick it somewhere else on a, on a document. That, that's the control X. And then our friend on the left, control Z, is the oops key, the, the undo key. So those are all very useful, right? Okay, so I've described all of these. So this is a very useful page when you get these documents. Uh, this page is very useful. Uh, uh, you can also use the control key for doing certain editing. So control P, prints the whole page on the screen. So if you've got a screen and you wanted to just print that whole page, you press control P, it'll print the whole page. Not very useful anymore when you, you know, we've got much more powerful printing features in, in Word and Excel and so forth. Uh, if you highlight some text and you type control B, it will bold it. If you type control I, it will italicize the text. And if you type control U, it will underline the text. Now we don't really need these much anymore because now, now we've got buttons in Word and Excel and so on for bold, italic, and underline. So you don't need to do it. But if you wanted to, this is another quick way. Control B, bold, control I, italics, control U, underline. But you first have to highlight the text that you want to bold or underline, okay? So, um, <clears throat> You know, example here with control C. If you deleted some text, control Z brings it back. If you just inserted some text and then you say, I didn't want to insert it there, you idiot. I want to insert it somewhere else, right? Control Z will erase what you just edited and you can do it again. So it works, works very well. Okay, now we're going to talk about the Windows desktop. Uh, any questions on that so far? And I spend a lot of time on it and it seems a relatively small thing, but uh, to me, the control the control C, C, Z, X, B sequence is among the most useful things that you can do on the computer, right? And you just have to play with it and try it out. Any questions? I have a question. I yes, came in a little late. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, but um, I don't know, why when you use the icon rather than control letter? Say again? Why wouldn't you use an icon, like the icon for copy, like the icon for page, like the icon for... You can do that too, exactly. You can do that too now. In fact, mm -hmm. very good point. So what came out with Windows 10 as, you know, became much more user-friendly. So now we have buttons in Word, Excel, and so forth. But if you're doing, let us say, an email, you know, if you're in your email, you're in Gmail, you don't have those buttons, right? And so this will work just as well in, in Gmail. Or if you're using um, a messaging app like WhatsApp, we'll talk about messaging apps later on. But WhatsApp is, a, is, is, a, is an app that you can use. It's called WhatsApp, W-H-A-T-S-A-P-P, -P, WhatsApp, which is like a pun on the word, what's up? You know, kids say to each other, what's up? What's up, bro? Well, WhatsApp allows you to send messages, but there is no... There is no icon for, for bold and I, italic and so on. So you can, that, that's where you could use it. But you're absolutely right. If you're, in, if you're in Microsoft Word, you're Microsoft Excel, the more sophisticated apps, they now have buttons for doing bold and so forth. And that's exactly what I said, including copy, right? But I still use the Control-C because it's so easy. 
You know, I don't have to go move my cursor around and press button. I've just been doing it for a long time. If you prefer the button, obviously it does exactly the same, the same job. Does that answer the question? I have a question. Yes, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Uh, I have a Windows Surface Pad. Uh huh. I'd like to know if I can get these uh, instructions today. Uh, can they be emailed to me so that I can go over them in more detail? Were you, were you not in, were you not online at the beginning of the session? Yes, everybody, I was. everybody can get these. I've, I've said this now and last week and today, everybody can get all of these notes. Just send me an email, right? And I showed you the email on, on the second screen. It's Jeff underscore Calvary at earthlink.net. So just send me a one line email saying, Please send me the uh, the Windows notes, and by you know usually within the next fifteen minutes or within, certainly within an hour, okay. you'll right. get them sent to you. It doesn't matter whether you're on a Surface or a, or a, or a Windows laptop. Uh, just send me an email, uh, and uh, at the end of the session, in a few minutes, I'll go back to that second screen which has got my email address on it. Okay, that's all you have oh. to do, and then it's my pleasure to send it to you. Thank and you. I want to talk, I want to talk about the desktop. So Windows has a thing called the desktop. And normally when you start Windows up, and starting Windows these days is very, very easy. You usually just open your laptop and press the power button just gently once. The power button usually is in the top left hand corner of, of, of the laptop, but some vendors put it elsewhere. HP always puts it in the top left, I know, and I think uh, Lenovo does as well, but some of the others may put it. So whatever your power button is, you just touch it gently and she'll restart and, and, and take you back to pretty much where you were last time. But very, very often it will take you to this black screen, which when you first install the operating system is pretty much blank. There's nothing on it, right? You have got a whole lot of things on it, a whole lot of pictures. That's called the desktop, right? And the desktop is a place where you can store files. You can put files there and you can... So any file that's there, if I go and click on it, if it's a Word document, it will open that Word document, it will open Word and at that, with that document. Or if it's a program, another app, uh, let's say Excel, I could, if I'm in Word and I go to the, back to the, the desktop and I click on the Excel icon, Excel will open up and I can have Word and Excel running at the same time and my email and I can be surfing the web on, on Chrome and so on. You can have all of those programs open at the same time. When you end your day, you don't have to close them out. It's not even worth closing out apps anymore at the, at the end of the day. If you're working on an important document, you type, you know, you type a hundred lines or five pages, I would save that so that in case something goes wrong. But other than that, you can just close your laptop or your, or your surface. You put the cover on the surface or you close the laptop. Windows will shut itself down very very intelligently. And then when you, tomorrow morning, when you open it up again and just touch the power button, she'll open up. Uh, Windows asks you for your password. So I can get into your stuff. If I get hold of your computer, it will ask for the password and you'll be right back where you were. So the desktop allows you to put files and stuff on. And what I say, yeah, this isn't really recommended. You know, I see people with, we'll see an example in the next screen, with lots and lots and lots and lots of files. And um, unfortunately, when you put you know, files on the desktop, it doesn't even automatically alphabetize them or anything. You can alphabetize, but it's just a pain in the neck. It's not a good way of doing things. It's kind of like a messy desk. You know, you've got hundreds of pieces of paper on your desk. Well, some people like to work, to that, work like that, but it's much easier to put files, in, useful information into folders. So I might have a folder, of, 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 of you know letters to the IRS or something and a folder with the banking information and so forth. Keep them in folders and Windows is very, very good at folders and you can always find the folders instantly. So it's, you know, as long as you know the name or even if you know part of the name, you can find the folder. But what I wanted to tell you about is the desktop has, first of all, this black area, which is the desktop itself. It's kind of like your blank desk um, at home. Um, and then at the bottom, there's a bar. You can see this slightly different colored bar called, they call it the taskbar. 
And that's really divided into two sections. There's this one section over on the left, you can see it's got some little tiny pictures on. We'll, we'll see a bigger one in a moment. And then on the right, there's some even teenier icons. So I don't know why they have these teeny ones, which stress our, our, um, our eyes, but that's the way it is. So here's an example of a desktop, okay? So here's a whole lot of icons, right? So these, are, uh, these icons are one of two things. They're either apps or they are files. And I'll talk about that in a second. Well, no, let me talk about it right now. So apps or programs are the ones with the little arrow. You see the little arrow? There's a little arrow here. There's a little blue arrow there. A little blue arrow there. A little blue arrow there. Those are all apps. So if I click on this one that says Google Chrome, all I've got to do is double click on it. Click, click with my left, left finger, left, left, left mouse button. Click, click. Uh, if I click on this, Chrome will open up. And Chrome is my browser. Um, <clears throat> here is one that, um, uh, this one is Adobe Reader. Right, Adobe is to read PDF files, and you'll need that. I'm going to send you the slides in PDF format for security reasons. They're always in PDF format. So if you double click on this, oh, Adobe will open up. I don't have to know where Adobe is on the computer. I don't even know anything about Adobe except that I want to use that program, or it could be Word or Excel or my email. G there could be a Gmail here, whatever you like. When you double click on it, that program will open up. The ones without an arrow, like this one here. You can see it's got the W on it. That stands for Microsoft Word. And here's one with a P on it, which is Microsoft PowerPoint. Those are documents. So if I click, double click on this one here, it, it's a document. Its name starts with the word experiment or something, right? And uh, yeah, this PowerPoint presentation, it says new Microsoft dot dot dot. It just shows you the first you know, word or two of, of the name. But if I double click on this, it will start Word up and open that document, okay? So it'll automatically open the appropriate app, which in this case is Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint or Excel or Gmail or whatever it is, and open up with that particular document. So it's a very nice way of storing stuff, but the problem is for some weird reason, Microsoft, it's not, it's not alphabetized, although you can alphabetize it, but also it's got a limit. You can see I've only got this amount of real estate here, and then it's full, and it's also really difficult to find stuff when you've done it like this, even if it's in alphabetical order. So we'll see a much better way to store our data uh, in our next session. What I wanna talk about is I'll show you this bottom line here. So the bottom line is, <clears throat> first of all, on the left, you'll see a little arrow, right? It's either an arrow or a, a little button marked start. You can e have either of them. This one's got the arrow on my other screen, and, my, my, my new computer that says start, and that the start button will take you to all kinds of operating system functions. We'll talk about that later. All the others here, uh, these are apps that are currently running in your computer, right? So here's an app you can see that's got the circle again. This, this little app, this one third from the right with the, with the four colors on it, that's Chrome. And that tells me that Chrome is running right now. So if I click on this button, if I clicked on that button right now, if I just click one time, it will take me to Chrome. This one over here that looks like a file folder is the Windows file system. And if I click on that, it will open up the file system. So I can hop between any of these apps as I want. This one here looks like it's got some chess pieces. It's probably a chess game. So if I click on that, it will take me back to the chess game I was playing or the you know, the Candy Crush that I was playing or whatever, whatever other application it was, as the applications are running, they will appear down here. So at any time, just by looking on the bottom line, I can see what is running in my computer. At the end of the day, as I said, do I need to close out Chrome and, and the chess game and, and the folders? No, just leave them there. And tomorrow when you start up, you can carry on right where you left off. So we call this the taskbar. And that's because all the tasks, the apps, they really should call it the app bar. Those are all the apps. And then over here, we have what they call the action center. And I just want to talk about the action center and then we can break, take questions and we will regroup next week. <clears throat> so the app, the, 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 uh, the app center has a number of things. Normally when you look at it, what you will see on the, on the right is the date and time. The date, so right now it's showing 
11.03 a.m., 6.22.2020. You can always see the date and time, right? And then next to it will be these three little icons. One that looks like a loudspeaker, one that looks like the circles, and one that looks like a battery. And as you expect, the, 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 if you click on the date time, then a calendar opens up. You can, look at your, you can look at a calendar and you can see, you know, what day Independence Day is going to be this year, right? Um, or, you know, what day your birthday is going to be. You can look in the calendar, you can move forward and backward in time. Uh, you can reset the time, you can reset the date. So the computer automatically maintains the time and the date. But if for any reason it got out of sync or you're in a different time zone, uh, although today Windows is clever enough to detect that you're in a different time zone and it changes automatically. But if it doesn't, you just click on that and you could change the time or you can change the date. Uh, <clears throat> click on the sound icon, this, this little icon here, that shows you, let's look at, it looks something like that. It shows you your speaker. This is your speaker, what you're hearing me with. And you'll see a little line here that says 67 in this little line. The 67 means that 67% of the maximum volume. And if I wanted to make it louder or softer, I've got to grab that little bar, right? And move it left or right. How do I grab it? Remember I told you before. To grab something, you just point it with a cursor like I'm doing now and hold down the left mouse button. And once you do that, point to this, this little bar, hold down the left mouse button, you'll find now you can move it left or right, right? You can make it softer, you can make it louder, exactly what you want. The, um, this one here is the Wi-Fi icon. This shows you the Wi-Fi strength, right? So I've got you know, three bars or four bars, as we say on the phone, except here they just show you a circles. And this will show you uh, what, what network you're connected to, right? So this would be my network at my home, right? It's connected, it's secured. This network requires a password. And you can click on properties and you can learn some more information about the network, mostly which you don't care about. Or you can press this button, which will disconnect you from the network. Uh, very seldom ever do that, right? And this one is the battery icon, which shows you how much battery I've got on my computer right now. So again, you've got a line that shows you really I'm 100%. Obviously, you can move this one up and down. The battery will only move down if it's not plugged in and using your computer. So most laptops will run for two to, two to four hours, two to five hours, purely on battery. And then you've got to, and, you, and this icon will then go down 90%, 80%, exactly like on your, on your phone, okay? So those are three useful little icons. They, they're quite small in the right, bottom right-hand corner, but all you have to do is click on it, click on this little icon and this much bigger picture opens up or of your network and so on. So if you want, you know, if you want to see which network you're connected to, uh, this is the way to do it. Uh, if you go to a different place, let's say you go to a Starbucks, please God, one of these days, we're all going to be able to go back to Starbucks and get their free Wi-Fi. Or you go to somebody else's house, uh, this will show you which network you're connected to. So if you're not getting, you're not, you're not able to go to Amazon or surf the web, that's because you haven't locked in, you haven't logged into their particular um, Wi-Fi, right? Maybe it's still trying to log into the Wi-Fi at your house, but you're not at your house anymore. Okay, any questions on that? So we've seen, uh, we've seen how to use the desktop, and there's nothing wrong with leaving files on the desktop, but it sure does get messy. Um, let's go back there. It can get messy. I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to see, you know, a, um, uh, a desktop that looks like this. Right? Question. This is just, you've just got too much on you. And of course, here they're all nicely arranged, but actually as things go on the desktop, Windows puts them all over the place. So the, all of these would be scattered all over this desk in a, in a really messy way. Uh, Windows, Microsoft could have done a better job of the desktop, but my suggestion to you, my recommendation is don't use the desktop to store anything on. A, it's not secure. Because, you know, anybody who sees your computer, you know, can see, ah, oh, this is an interesting Word document. Let me take a look at it. If you go off to the bathroom and leave your computer running, um, it's far better to have it in files and nobody would know which file it was in. Yes, ma'am. Answer, answer your question, please. Yes. My question is, did you say that when you're done working, 
you do not have to shut down your computer. You just close it and yes. Windows will automatically shut it off. Yes, ma'am. So when you close when you close your computer, what happens is uh, when you just close the top, Windows goes into what it calls hibernation mode. It, it sort of goes to sleep, just like you and I do when we go to sleep at night. And when you wake up in the morning, you haven't forgotten everything you did last night. Well, I do because my memory is terrible, but most of us don't, right? So Windows is exactly the same. If you just simply close the top, Windows takes care of it. It shuts itself down quietly. And when you open it up in the morning, it will take you right back exactly to where you were yesterday with all the same apps running in the, exactly the same place. If you had just been to Amazon and looked at some products, that's where Chrome or whatever browser you're using will be. If you had just been working on a Word document, it will, when you look, go back to Word, uh, that document will be there exactly at the last word or whatever it was that you typed, the last sentence you typed. So you oh, do Okay, one more question. Mm, sure. <laughs> okay, if you're doing an update and before that update is completed, you close your laptop, We'll no, don't do that. Continue. That's not a good thing to do. Oh. Don't close it in the middle of an update because that will really mess stuff, stuff up. Now, Windows has become very clever. In the old days, if you turned off your computer in the middle of the update, you could be in a whole mess of trouble, right? It's like, you know, your, your engine of your car is sort of half out. It's now hanging, hanging on by one bolt. Not a good situation to be in, right? Or, or the, the wheels on your car, you've taken off three of the bolts and there's only one bolt left. That's not a good situation to be in, right? Uh, so don't do that. But Windows 10, by and large, will not get screwed up and it will close itself down. And when you open up again, it will realize that it was only halfway through the update and it will go back to the update and finish it. But the one okay. thing that I don't recommend is, you know, once you start an update, let it finish. The good news oh. is almost all of the updates, I mean, the two that we've had in the last few days, they took less than five minutes, like one or two or three minutes. Sometimes there's a big one. About once a year, Windows will give you a big update. And that might take five minutes or perhaps 10. You know, the days when updates took hours, the, those are long gone, right? Nothing takes half an hour anymore. So 10 minutes, five minutes, five to 10 minutes is a big update. It's so efficient today. But don't, you know, once you've started an update, rather, you know, even if you, you want to go to bed, just, just leave it running. It doesn't do it any harm uh, to be open and running and Windows will finish the update and then your computer will go to sleep anyway by itself. You know, it'll, it'll, it won't power itself down, but it'll, it'll go back to the position where it needs you to enter the password. So nobody else while you're asleep could get into your computer. Make sure, by the way, from a security point of view, everybody that you have a password or a PIN, Windows also allows a PIN, a PIN number, uh, so that, you know, once it kind of, puts itself to sleep, if, if you haven't used it for five minutes, I can't just walk along and, you know, nosily, you've gone off to the bathroom or to have lunch and I'm a really nosy guy and I just, you know, hit, hit the enter key and now I can see everything you're doing. No, before yeah. I can see what you're doing, Windows will say, please enter the password and, and then I can see what you were doing. See that? But don't, don't, you don't really have to bother to turn it off. Now, if you're not plugged in, right, um, you know, let's say you're on the plane or, you know, we can't go on the plane much anymore, but you're on the plane or for some reason, you're not going to have a power connection for many, many, many hours. Well, then the battery might run down. That's the only time I would power down the computer. These days, leave it running overnight. Doesn't do it any harm. Doesn't over, overpower the battery. Doesn't, once the battery is 100%, it stays at 100%. Um, uh, some, please, please mute whoever, uh, there's a phone in the background. Um, uh, you know, that doesn't do it any harm whatsoever to leave, to leave your computer running. But like I say, what I do every night is I just close the top. And, well, you know, once I'm at a point where I can stop, you know, it's not in the middle of an update and so on, close the machine, open, open the, 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 the lid tomorrow, just touch the power button. Don't hold it down because if you hold it down for, you know, like, five seconds or something, that will really power the computer down and turn it off, which is not what you want to do. Just touch it and she'll pop up, you type in your password and you're right back where you were yesterday, which is great. Uh, Jeff? Yes. 
Um, in terms of um, charging the computer, mm -hmm. uh, is it safe to, to leave it charging overnight or? Sure. Yeah, yeah. My computer is plugged in all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, the battery is at 100% all the time because even while I'm working, I've got it plugged in. Is it, is it, if it, is it you know, over, overcharging the battery? No. Once the battery gets to 100%, it just stops charging. So if you leave it mm -hmm. charging overnight, that's fine. In fact, you know, the best way to work with a laptop is keep it plugged in all the time. I, I, I only use it on battery when I'm literally not near a power. You know, I'm, I'm in my car, for, for example, or on, on an airplane. You know, please God, one of these days we can go back on an airplane again. So if I'm going to be on an airplane for five hours to California, then, it, then it's using the battery up and that's fine. But if I'm here in my office or somewhere in my house, um, I just plug it into the nearest, you know, I've got the power cable. I just plug it into the nearest outlet. Even if it's a hundred percent, doesn't do it any harm at all. Mm. Same, same with your phone. You know, um, you, you can plug in your phone. The, the best place to have your power connection for your phone is right next to your bed. So as soon as I get into bed at night, I plug in the, you know, I've got a permanent cable connected to the power. I just plug it in my phone, put my phone next to my bed and I go to sleep. I know whatever it was when I went to sleep, if it was 10% or 95%, when I wake up in the morning, it's going to be 100% and I'm fully charged for the day. But if it was 95%, it's going to get to 100% in a few minutes. The rest of the night isn't going to do it any harm. In the old days, you could overcharge a battery. Today, it's much, much, much more intelligent. The battery will stop charging at 100%, won't do it any damage. It's but my cell phone, when I leave it, like, it gets hot. It shouldn't. Is it an old phone? Maybe I've had it about a year or so. No, then I would it take it in to, to wherever you got it. It shouldn't get hot. It, it could get warm, but it should not get hot. You know, if it's hot so that it, you know, it's, it's hot to your fingers, you can't touch it, that's dangerous. It could start a fire. That shouldn't be happening because my phone doesn't do that at all. You know, it might get a little warm because the battery's charging, but it shouldn't be such that when you touch the phone, you're like, oh, ouch, you know, if, if, if it's an ouch situation, you can actually feel that it's hot. That's not a good situation. It could be that you, there's something wrong with battery. Thank you. Sure. I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, how, I see a scene where they say you can download Windows 10, Windows 10 free. Is that true? I have Windows 10. I don't, I don't have it in one, one of my computers. I have you it on have, this one. But I, you, you, don't I, have win, you don't have Windows 10. I have it on this computer, but I have yeah. other computers that don't have it. I got seven. Oh, you got seven. Well, you know, to be, honest, to be honest, seven, for most purposes that you and I use, seven is perfectly good as long as Microsoft keeps updating it. But I think Microsoft has either stopped updating seven or they've announced that they're going to stop updating it. Well, so, they say it's out of date. They flashed me a, a, a page saying that it's now out of date, it's no longer in use. But I'm just wondering, but I see on CNET where they say you can get download Windows 10 free. Is that true? <laughs> no, 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 you, no, no. You, you can download it, but uh, Microsoft charges for Windows. I don't know what the charge is because, you know, that's their primary product. But what, <clears throat> what I meant was when you buy a new computer today, Windows comes on the computer. So well, you no, already, I'm talking about my old computer now, my computer I've had for years, my, my you know. Yeah, you can download Windows 10. Uh, you just go to Microsoft. So with your browser, go to Microsoft.com. You know, or you can just search for download Windows 10. Uh, <clears throat> they'll allow you to download it, but I think you have to pay for it if, 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 if you've only got a Windows 7. How much it costs, I don't know. Uh, I haven't done that for years. Not that much. Uh, you know, in the old days, that would have been very expensive exercise. It didn't cost, I don't know what it costs now. I, I haven't done that because every computer I've got has had it on. And we are probably at a point in time now where if you still got Windows 7, it's probably a good idea to upgrade it to Windows 10. Um, there's only one issue with that. Some old computers don't have the capacity to handle Windows 10. So it depends how old your computer is. And, and there's no way for me to know that the only way to find that out is actually to, to try it. And you may find if you download Windows 10, it won't install because it says, you know, this computer doesn't have certain hardware that 
that Windows 10 needs. Unlikely, you know, as long as the computer is not 20 years old or something, if it's six or seven years old, uh, yeah. Windows 10 will probably work fine, but I think you're going to have to pay for Windows 10. <laughs> Okay, well, on CNET, it says you can get it free. You know, CNET, that's what they say. Well, I think you can download it for free, but I think to install it, they want ka-ching, ka-ching, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, my, Microsoft did not become a $100 billion corporation by giving stuff away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you know, okay, it, I'm, I'm going to try and see. So okay. It's just the same as your bank. You know, Bank of America didn't become that big by giving us money for free, right? <laughs> There's right. always a charge somewhere. But mm -hmm. you know, if, if it's you know if it's a hundred dollars or something, to my mind that's that's a huge bargain compared you know when you think of what it's actually worth. But on the other hand, if it costs too much to upgrade, then it may be cheaper just to buy a new computer, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, but you know, I, I would get everybody onto Windows 10 because Windows 7 now uh, is probably not secure anymore. There there are security weaknesses in it that Microsoft is no longer updating. You know, they just can't, they can't keep supporting old versions beyond a certain point because it's just too expensive for them. Okay, thank you. Good. Any more? Great. Thank you very much, everybody. I will see you next week. Same place, same station, same time. Uh, and Sharita will very kindly uh, put the, um, uh, the uh, um, recording of this I will, we will, will she will upload it to to youtube later today and so you can review it at your at your leisure oh i i, I did make you one promise and i'm sorry i haven't done that oops uh, ah, come on uh, okay well let's stop uh, i was going to show you the first second screen again that had my email on but i'll just tell it tell you what it is it's jeff j-e-f-f -F, underscore Kalvariski, K-A-L-W-E-R-I-S, as in Sam, K-Y, at earthlink.net. Or you can also send me at jeff.kalvariski, spelled the same, at gmail.com. Either way, just send me a, a one-line email give, you know, saying your name and that you were on the, uh, the Windows 10 class and you would like the, uh, the slides, and I will send them to you. Anybody who sent me the email in the last few days who hasn't got the slide, give it a, about another hour. I will go check everywhere that I can look for in junk mail and whatever where, where you know, Windows may have put your email, for which I apologize. And if I can find it, I will send it to you. But if you don't get it, that means I didn't find it, then just send me another email later today and I promise you, you will get it. Have a great day, everybody. See you next okay. week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.